Hi, my name is Michael, and here we are again in Sioux Trading Post. And what I'd like to show you today is a beading stitch. It's the most common stitch for in this area for people, tribally for people in this area, the Lakota people. It's called the lazy stitch. It's been some people think that's a little pejorative, so they have kind of renamed it in the beading world to the lame stitch, but most people still say lazy stitch. It's a one thread technique. I have my thread here doubled with my needle. It's a double thread, not a, at the end. And I did wax the thread. You just run the thread across a chunk of beeswax, and that keeps it from tangling. It makes your thread stronger, and it also makes the thing sticky. Okay, so I'm going to come up from the back. Now this thread technique is not seen from the back. There's two ways to get beads to apply. I have some loose beads here and I also have some beads on a hank. I'm going to show you with this one, if you want to get beads on, you just loose beads, you just go scoop, scoop, scoop. And then your beads are right on there, okay? So that is if, that's if you're working with loose beads. Most of the antique beads are. So that is how you do. That's how you put those on. Okay. Another way to do it that is fairly tidy if you're using beads that are hanked is you just take one of the strands loose from the hank, okay, and then you just put your beads on like so. Just take them from that onto your needle right off of the string, the hanked string. And that's what I'll do in this, in this deal here. Now you kind of have to count your beads. There's an eight row. I wonder if seven might be a little bit better. These are bigger beads, so I'm just gonna use seven beads per row. Now this bead, like I, this thread, uh, stitch, like I say, does not show on the back side or shouldn't. Basically, I'm going to nick the hide and it's gonna come one bead's width away. Needle goes in and out. Try to get it about a bead's width away. You can use your fingernails to kind of push them around a little bit. Load on seven more beads. You have to count. Um, check beads are much more regular, regularly shaped than um, Italian beads. But the Italian beads have such nice colors. Now here I'm going three. Yeah, there's seven on there again. So I took that stitch and I'm. I find it easiest to work this stitch, I'm right-handed, I find it easiest to work this stitch working away from me. Some people find it easier to do this stitch if they're right-handed, working this way and having it go sideways. That to me is awkward, but that is totally up to the individual beater and you really part of doing beading and um, making it keeping it fun really and kind of easier is finding the direction in which you should work it's it's really it's pretty important so anyway this is how I do it and now I'm going to put some beads on there again I think I got one too many there. And then you go like this. You can see that? See how it's just... You go in there and out. You can kind of bend your hide or whatever you're beading on a little bit to help you. But you want to get it about a bead's width away. Okay. So there we have three stitches. Now, you'll only see that knot on the back. You won't see any other stitches because I'm just nicking the surface of the hide deep enough to hold the thread tightly. But that's how lazy stitch is done. 
And sometimes if you pull it a little tighter, it'll kind of arch up. I'll show you some examples here in a minute of some finished items with the, this stitch. But you kind of have to count. One shy. Okay, here we go. I use my thumbnail a lot to just kind of push things into shape. Put it where I want it. I'm going in there and out. You're going a bead's width away as your stitch length, and after a while, what you're going to want to do is just rely on your stitch length and and not making it as so county and counting and manic you know what I mean because beadwork really is should be relaxing and kind of fun Two, four, seven. there we go That one was a little close, but I think it's livable. If you do make a mistake, I will show you. See, I, I, to me, this one was a little bit close. So I'm going to take it out, and I'll show you something that's kind of fun when you use these really little, thin beading needles. They are so thin that it's very easy to correct what you consider a mistake. It'll just kind of straighten out your needle and you can just pull it back and it'll pull right out and we'll just go a little bit further ahead is all. There, I think that's going to work better. Okay, now we'll put these on. How can you be sure you don't go through the back of the hide? Um, you'll just be able to tell after a bit of time of, of, of doing it um, how deep you'll be able to tell yep none left, none so far although sometimes if it's if the hide is thin you don't want to beat on too thin of, of a hide and also if you were beating on maybe felt felt works like hide but um, if you're beating on cloth, you're going to have to go all the way through because it's too thin. It wouldn't hold it. So that is basically how you start your lazy stitch or what's also called your lane stitch. Um, your you can kind of mark out your designs. Um, your designs you can do some naturalistic things with this as you work with it you'll, you'll realize what you can do but but your designs with your lazy stitch are definitely a little more digital say than they would be if you were using a two needle applique stitch just a little which is it's just the way it's done I'm going through there again There's that. Just kind of shove it around where you want it. It's just, like I say, it's really a question of figuring out which is the best way for you to hold it. And then you just get your technique down learn your stitch and just do it and then serially repeat that stitch a few thousand times and by mm -hmm. gosh you'll have something to show for.